If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Exodus chapter 3. I'm going to be starting at verse 1. If not, I'm sure they'll have it on the screen. Father, I just pray that you would come into this house, that your Holy Spirit come and minister to our hearts and our minds. Father, I pray you allow your servant to get out of the way, that you might have your way. Father, we honor you. We give you glory, praise, and honor for it. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. All right. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock back to the, to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked. And behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the brush was not, but the brush, bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will not turn aside. I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Lord, I am the God of your father, Abraham, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. And have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have came down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, and a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians have oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to the Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of, Egypt, children of Israel out of Egypt? I want to talk about shifting. And the greatest shift that I see in the Bible is when God brought the Israelite people out of captivity, out of Egypt. And he used Moses to do it. But you hear in church all the time, we kind of talk about shift. Oh, I feel a shift in the spirit. We all get excited. We all start clapping. We all jump around. But yet, have you ever counted the cost of a shift? God reveals things in his creation to explain to us certain circumstances that we don't understand. I'm a nerd. I'm going to get real nerdy here right now. The, the, the tectonic plates of the earth, when they begin to shift, they collide with one another, right? Right? So when there's a shifting, they collide with one another. And when they collide, it's not a pretty situation. When they collide, they create earthquakes. When they collide, they create tsunamis. When they collide, they create volcanoes. So why would we get excited about a shift? What are some of the results of a shift? First, I want to talk about Moses and his story. Moses was minding his own business. And the Bible says that he saw a burning bush. And because he decided in his mind to turn and look at this bush and see why it was burning, God spoke to him. How many times have you walked past that burning bush and chose not to look and investigate why that bush was burning but it wasn't consumed? Or let me go a little deeper. 
Have you ever seen a man that was on fire for God, but was not consumed by that fire, but chose not to pay attention to that man of God? Oh, now, I know y'all, as soon as God spoke, y'all rose up and became angels. I know, but I didn't. Many times the man of God brought the fire and I seen the fire in him, but I chose to turn away. I did not give my attention. I did not make up my mind. I did not make a choice in my heart to figure out why is he on fire, but he's not consumed. Why? What is that fire that's burning over here? And I chose to look the other way. God's not going to speak if you're not going to listen. So, so here he was, he saw this bush burning, but it wasn't consumed, and he determined in his own mind, I'm going to figure out what's going on over here. Sometimes you can see a fire burning within somebody. You know, you can recognize people and not know who they are. Maybe I need to explain that. You can see what's in somebody before you know who they are. If people can't see the God inside of you, if they can't see the fire of God burning with inside of you, you're not going to get their attention. It was the fire that got his attention. Then he wanted to know why the fire wasn't consuming the bush. So what, what, what am I, I want to go a little bit deeper. You see somebody that's going through the worst circumstances of their lives. Their whole life is falling apart. But yet it's not consuming their lives. Come on, man. You can go through situations that will tear your whole world apart, but still have the calm, the peace, and the joy of the Lord down inside of you that it does not move you. What I'm going through doesn't determine who I am. What I'm going through does not dictate how I feel, right? I don't like my situation. But listen, I know somebody that's in control of it. He's my father. He's my Abba father. He loves me unconditionally. And his purpose for my life is to prosper me and not to harm me. But too often we look at people and look at what's going on in our lives and we just, you're judging a moment. Don't judge where I'm at right now. Hmm? I'm in a shift. I'm in a shift right now. But see, when you go through a shift, Moses was just tending his sheep, just doing his thing. He was going to work, doing his nine to five. He wasn't expecting it. It was unexpected, wasn't it? And then God tells him, he says, I want you to go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Uh, uh, wait a minute God in case you don't remember I killed a guy back there and they don't like me very much I mean could you see I, I mean just think about what Moses must have been thinking like God maybe you got the wrong guy I don't know if you remember but like I killed this guy back there and like everybody hated me they all kicked me out I had to run it was going to kill me so sometimes when you're in a shift and God is shifting you and he speaks to you, it's not going to look like you think it ought to look. When, when shifting happens, a shift is messy. A shift is messy. You've got tsunamis. You've got earthquakes. You've got breaking relationships in your life. God will separate you from people that ain't supposed to be in your life. He will break relationships that you thought were supposed to be in your life forever. And he will remove people from your life. You will, come on, man. He will break your heart. A shift breaks everything. But let me tell you what a shift is. Just so you know what I'm talking about. A shift is when two opposite forces collide. Let me take it one step deeper. A shift is when my will collides with the will of God for my life. When I come to a place 
where God says, I know this is what you had planned, but this is what I need you to do. And I don't want you to walk that way. I want you to go this way. I don't want you tending them sheep no more. I want you to go over here and set my people free. Oh, come on. That's a whole lot better than y'all. A shift is when two wheels collide. When those tectonic plates collide, it changes the structure of the earth. It changes the platform. When your will collides with God's will, it demands change. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. Listen, someone's going to win. Either my will will succeed or his will will succeed. The governing power in your life must shift. God says, okay. Okay, Moses. Because, see, Moses was content. When he was in Egypt, he was torn between two. He was Hebrew, but yet he was raised an Egyptian. He didn't know who he was. Oh, listen, I know there's somebody watching me today, and I know there's somebody in this room. You're like not all the way in, but you're not all the way out. You just don't know where you're at. You might be in a shift. You might be in a shift. So Moses, where he came from, he didn't feel comfortable because he knew he was a Hebrew, but he was raised in his, as an Egyptian. And when he saw an Egyptian beating his Hebrew brother, something rose up on the inside of him. Oh, come on. He was never called to be an Egyptian. But sometimes... God's got to take you out of where you are in order to reveal the authentic you inside of you. Come on. Yeah, that's worthy of praise right there, brother. Sometimes we will never become the authentic person that God has called us to be in the situation that created us. Mm. Oh, that's good right there. God will take you out of your comfort zone or out of the place that you were created in and take you to a place where you can actually discover and become your authentic self. But then you want to know how you tell if you're authentic? When he takes you back to where he, mm, he takes you back to where he brought you out of, to where you were created and reveals your true authenticity. Are you going to be true to who I've called you to be? Mm, come on, listen. You can go somewhere else and become your authentic self. But what happens when he takes you back to the environment that created you? Are you going to continue to be the authentic you that he's called you to be? Or are you going to give in to who you used to be? Give him some glory. God's good. Have you ever been consumed by the fire of God? Have you ever given him at all? Given him everything? I'll tell you what. When Moses went to come towards the bush, God spoke to him. He says, before you take another step, take off your shoes. Because the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. The other day, I, I was a couple of weeks ago, I was driving down the road and I had one of them God moments where God kind of spoke to me. He told me a shift was coming. But I was like, yeah, I feel it. <laughs> right? Like, like I know better than he does. He said, no, son, you don't understand. There's a shift coming. 
And he began to bring that scripture back to me where he told Moses to take off his shoes because where he was standing was holy ground. And he says, do you know why I told Moses to take off his shoes? I, I, I said, well, uh, 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 reverence? He said, no. He said, I wanted him to take off his shoes because his shoes was carrying the residue of where he had been. Oh, come on. Because where I was taking him, he could not carry the residue of where he had been in, in order to walk in what I was calling him to walk in. He said that was holding him back. And I needed him to let go of all of his past failures, all of his past mistakes, all of the things he should have, could have, would have, but didn't do, all the stuff that he had been through, all the stuff that I had walked him through to this point. I needed him to to take it off and set it aside. Because, listen, when there's a shift in your life, you're not going to win the way you won before. You're not going to succeed the way you succeeded before because things have changed. There's a shift coming. There's a shift coming. But we're not going to win the battle the same way we won it before. You're going to have to do something different. We're going to have to rely on our God, our Savior, our Father. He said, I want you to put off all of your successes, all of your failures, all of your doubts. I want you to put off all the things you knew. And I want you to step in to this holy ground. Because where I'm taking you, you've never been before. Mm, come on. And what I'm going to do in your life, I've never done before. Uh, you don't know where I'm taking you. You don't know where I want you to go. You don't know what I want you to do. All I want you to do is trust me. I'm going to shift things so much you're not going to recognize where you are. And you're going to have to trust in the almighty God. If you don't trust in me, you ain't going to make it. So you better get ready for a shift. Man, I'm getting... <clears throat> I'm trying to calm down a little bit. So all this is taking place on Mount Horeb, right? So, so, so Mount Horeb is where Moses would receive the Ten Commandments just for, I know, too much information. You can read about that in Deuteronomy. Some of you right now are, are in the fire. Right now. But you're not consumed. The fire was not intended to kill you. The fire is intended to reveal and to expose. Oh, come on. It's going to get real in here now. It's going to get real tight. So, you know, just, just, just bear with me. Just bear with me. It reveals the power of God despite every, how everything looks around you. No matter what you see, God is still God. He's still sitting on the throne. He's still all-powerful, right? But it also exposes areas of weakness in our lives, in our hearts, and in our minds that need addressed before we move into where he's taken us. If you want to step into what God has for you, if you want to walk through this shift and walk into the glory that God has for you, you're going to have to deal with some stuff. You're going to have to shake off some of that dirt that you've walked through, some of that dirt that you're carrying that's holding you back, some of that stuff that you didn't ask for, some of that stuff that you did ask for, some of that stuff's your fault, some of it's your daddy's fault, some of it's your friend's fault, some of it you didn't ask for. And some of it you created yourself. So it's designed to expose what's on the inside that people can't see. When there's a shift, it's not designed to be a happy time. Although it is. When my will collides with God's will, it's not a happy time for me. <laughs> I guess y'all just get happy, right? 
When God says you ought not watch that show. Hmm? Well, you ought not. You ought not go to that club. Y'all just started dancing and praising God, didn't you? I know y'all are holy. I know y'all watch it. I know you're holy too. Yep. Yep. I don't know about you, but when God reveals his will in my life, it hurts. Things start breaking. My will and your will and the will of God is not the same. It causes earthquakes in the relationships in my lives. It causes heartache. And it causes hot spots to erupt because it reveals tender spots inside of me. Oh, come on, man. When you're in a shift and you don't recognize where you are and you'll be snapping at people like you, like you don't know Jesus. Okay, I'll just speak for me. Like when God went, because listen, when this is all happening, this is a pressure point. The shift is a pressure point. It is the pressure between my will and God's will, what God wants to do and what I want to do. If you ever want to make God laugh, just tell him your plans. I'm sure as many times as I've told God my plans, he has laughed. I know. At least I hope so. He thought it was funny. He said, yeah, Okay. But, son, that's not my plan for you. Son, I know this doesn't feel good, and I know it doesn't look like it should. But, listen, this is what I have to do in order to get you into this shift. So a shift means I'm no longer looking and acting and talking and walking like I did. But now I'm going to shift into how God wants me to talk, how God wants me to walk. How, come on now. For me, I need God to work on my mouth because I got a big mouth. Like, I'm a... <laughs> Believe it or not, I can't shut up. I, I just don't know how to shut up sometimes. And if I would just close my mouth sometimes, I would make my life a whole lot easier. My mouth gets me in more trouble than anything else in my life. Just ask my wife. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to tell you six things. And y'all give me ten more minutes. I promise I'll work this out. I'm going to give you six things that are revealed in a shift. Number one, God reveals doubt. First thing Moses said, he was like, who, me? No, I think, I think you mean somebody else. It reveals doubt in us, in ourselves. Y'all don't doubt that you are who God called you to be? I don't know about you, but some of the things that God has spoke into my heart, they, they, they humble me, they break me to my knees. I'm like, that can't be me. You must be talking about somebody else. Like, let me go on back here and you just get it together because I, that don't. And then how many times have God spoken something into your life, but yet you don't see it? It don't look like what he said. Like, God didn't say this. Why is this happening? Well, because the collision of my will and his will is blowing up right now. And see, but what you don't see is he's changing something in me. And all you see is the chaos around me because of the collision of the two powers. Hmm. Number two, it will reveal strength and grace that God gave you to do what he's called you to do. If you don't know, I'm going to tell you now. You can't do what you do without the grace of God. Have you ever looked at somebody's life and they're just everywhere doing everything? Like every stuff. Like you're just like, how, in the, do you, how do you do it all? You got like 14 kids. You go to college. You're going to work. You got a job. You, you volunteer. You go to church. You do, like how, how do you do it? Or if you had anybody look at your life and say, I don't understand how you're standing here talking to me and holding it all together when I know your whole life is crumbling. 
It's because of the grace of God on your life. Give him some glory. You better praise him. I exist and I stand only because of the grace that God gives me. So if you want to know if, you're, if God is shifting you, you no longer have the grace to do what you were doing. God will shift you in your life. Listen, I've been building in construction. That's what I do. I'm a contractor. I've been building for over 25 years. I'm okay. I'm pretty good at it, I guess. Well, according to me, I'm good. But I want to tell you something. I feel like I've lost the grace to do it. I believe there's a shift coming in my life. Man, I used to, I was building 100 houses a year at the boom. I mean, I was, I, it was, I was, it was crazy. But I was walking up, right, praising God. I was getting her done. Now, I get two jobs going. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't take it anymore. Stop calling me. I'm done. <laughs> The grace of God, God will give you the grace to do what he's called you to do. If God is calling you to something, how do you know if it's him shifting you? You'll have grace to do it when nobody else could. You feel me? God gives us grace to do. Okay, so Moses, and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not off track. I, I, I'm bringing it back. I'll rein it back in. I'm sorry. I, I'll rein it back in. Listen. So Moses didn't feel that he had the grace of God. He doubted that he had enough grace from God to go back to where he came from to do what God called him to do. What's God calling you to do that you are doubting that he can give you the grace to do it? <clears throat> That's another message. Number three, it reveals those who are called to walk with you and those who are not. A shift will shift people out and shift people in. Not everybody going to like you. And if everything in your life is held together because people like you, get ready. <laughs> When your validation comes from man, you're in trouble. But when God validates you, ooh, mm, I feel that. Come on. When God validates you, you don't need a man to tell you. Come on, because I can walk with my shoulders stretched back. The enemy throwing everything, like the Wizard of Oz, the house, the cow, everything. It's okay because I got a word from God. I know that I'm walking in the grace of God because when God calls you to something, he gives you the grace to do something. Sometimes a shift gets a little messy. A shift will crack relationships because it will take you in a different direction than where it's taking them. Doesn't mean they're bad people. Don't stop loving them. Do you hear me? It does not mean that they're bad people because God did not call them to walk where he called you to walk. Everybody gets mad. Why? Man, we church folks. You are my brother in the Lord. If the Lord is leading you that direction, I'll praise God for you. Why do we feel that if somebody is not called and given the grace that we have to go in our direction, why do we feel it so necessary to demonize them? Praise God for your brothers and sisters. Encourage them. It's hard enough fighting the enemy. You don't have to fight your brothers and sisters too. Just saying. I'll calm down. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Four. 
A shift will reveal things in you that must change. Right? A lot of times we go through our lives and we really think that we're doing good. Until those shift happens. And when that shift happens, all of a sudden, some pressure starts building up on the inside. And things start bubbling out <laughs> that you really thought were taken care of. But somehow, in some way, it starts revealing itself again. Like, I thought I dealt with this, like, back in 2002. Like, where would this come from? My attitude... I ain't got no attitude. What are y'all talking about? I was waiting for somebody to start screaming. Oh, oh, no, she's quiet. She's busy. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes we think we got it all together because things are going good. But really, it's good enough for this season. But the next season, when God shifts things around... You're not going to be able to take that with you. And God says, I'm going to reveal this because I need you to shift this out. Because who I'm calling you to be is not allowed to be that. <clears throat> Number five, a shift will reveal power, the power of God despite everything that comes against you. When God told Moses, go tell Pharaoh to set my people free. What happened when he told Pharaoh? Surely not what I would have expected. He told Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh said, what? <laughs> Get this guy out of here. Who is this guy? Who does he think he is? Get him out of here. Sometimes when you try to walk in and try to do what God has called you to do, you have to recognize that you're going to come against some adversity. There is an enemy. Mm. There is an enemy that doesn't want you to achieve and doesn't want you to shift into God, who God wants you to be. Because if you'll shift into who God wants you to be, somebody else is getting set free. Ah. He's not fighting just you. He's fighting who he's going to reach through you. So when you think you're fighting for you, you're actually not fighting for you. You're fighting for who he's going to reach through you. Because God didn't save me for me. He saved me for who he can reach through me. And if I'll just get out of myself and stop worrying about myself all the time, if I'll just give God some room in my life because it ain't about Steve, it ain't about you, it's about who he can reach through you. All of us have somebody that's watching our lives and watching us parade around with our Christian signs. But then they're watching you act like... I'm not going, I'm not going there. A shift will reveal the power of God despite everything that's going on around you. Even though you don't see it. Even though when Moses went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, no. I know what I would have said. Don't you know who sent me? Have you lost your cotton-picking mind? Like God himself, Yahweh, said, let my people go. <laughs> Sometimes we got to be patient. Ouch. Sometimes it doesn't look like it should. According to our will, according to what we think, it will reveal who you are not, and it will reveal who God is. If you notice, when Moses was at the bush, and God told him to go tell Pharaoh to set my people free, Moses said, who am I? God never answered that question. I want you to feel this. Because it was never about who Moses was. It was always about who he is. It don't matter who you are. You have nothing in this. It's not about you, it's about him. God never answered that question. 
He said, Moses, it, it don't matter who you are or are not. It's only about who I am. He said, I am that I am. And you tell him that I am sent you. <clears throat> Sometimes we get caught up in who we are and who we're not. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. I guarantee you can't without him. Today I want to encourage somebody. I told you 10 minutes, I'm right on time. Today I want to encourage you to determine in your own mind to look at that fire of God. Wherever it's burning, turn towards the fire. Don't look away. We've already counted the cost. It's going to cost you something, right? Your salvation cost you something. You had to give something up, right? I had to give up my will for his will. This shift that's coming is going to cost you something. Count the cost. Lean into the fire. Determine in your mind that you're going to look into the fire and God will speak into you. He'll speak through the fire. I know some of you are going through the fire right now. Doesn't look like God's anywhere there. Neither here nor there. But a shift requires change in the powers that are in control. That means a shift in the power that's controlling your life. If you don't know what power is controlling your life, you need to start reading your word. Because if it's not the gospel, or if there's areas that you're being controlled by, whether it be the media, whether it be government, whether it be sickness, whether it be whatever it is, hear me and feel this right now. Our God is above all those things. And you are the most important thing on his mind. He wants your heart. All of this is temporary. I don't care where you're at in your walk. I don't care where you're at in the world. All God's concerned with is your heart. And if you'll give it to him, he'll take you places you never thought you could go. 